everyone, welcome to our special show, Andhra Pradesh, India's Sunrise State, Industry 4.0 Inspired Me Governance. As the Digital India mission gains momentum, different cities are getting their infrastructure ready and taking initiatives to make this mission a success. Over the next half hour, we'll find out how the state of Andhra Pradesh is embracing technology to empower its citizens and offer them better governance. India's digital dreams took new shape as Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the Digital India Mission, a flagship program to connect every part of the country and make it a digitally empowered knowledge economy. As the nation embraces the fourth industrial revolution, technology is transforming every walk of life in an all-pervasive manner. And governance is no exception. Today, government services are at the fingertips of citizens, offering transparency and accountability of public servants. One state that is leapfrogging into the future with its e-governance initiatives is Andhra Pradesh. To begin with, what's your vision for Andhra Pradesh as far as e-governance is concerned? No, today, technology and Internet of Things are dominating the world. Now we are passing fourth industrial revolution. It is a deadly combination with technology and Internet of Things. So there is every possible to go for real governance. Information technology will bring accountability, transparency, speediness and quality of decision making. So even earlier tenure I promoted it and also I strongly believing even today the knowledge economy. Future is for knowledge economy. For knowledge economy, information technology will contribute to the maximum extent. So we are going e-governance in a big way. If you can see here, e-pragati project we are able to bring. As on today, smart pulse survey we have conducted. We are able to link other to all beneficiaries of our government, either it may be ration, it may be pension, it may be scholarship, it may be attendance, so many things we are able to integrate. Then naturally, there is no fraud. All binami, all bogus are totally eliminated. This is a big reform we are able to do now. We are having 29,000 fair press shops where we are having e-pass. All my PDS public distribution stakeholders, especially poor people, by using biometrics, either fingerprint or Irish, they are taking ration. We are able to save 11% in PDS for the last one and a half year. The investment, what we have invested, we are able to recover within two months time. So that is the benefit on information technology. If you were to compare Andhra Pradesh with other states in terms of e-governance, where would you say AP stands? We are uh, far, far ahead of anybody. There is no competition near to us. It is a comprehensive program I have taken up. I am using now Internet of Things, biometrics, surveillance cameras, drones, even um, uh, so many sensors, all devices I am using. It is giving so much of advantage for us. And the core dashboard seems to be very close to your heart. So how has it made it easy for you to, you know, uh, take care of administration and what's the kind of impact that has had? I wanted to computerize all my departments. As on today, People's Hub I have created, Land Hub I, have, I am able to create. In Finance Department I am using SAP and also all departments who are working together. Then ultimately, I want to go total computation and link with economic indicators, that is GVA contribution, GSTP contribution, sustainable development goals adopted by UNDP, I want to follow. I have given two programs. This is family empowerment and also society empowerment. 15 points, 10 points, I want to integrate. Ultimately, every department I want to fix performance indicators. Goal is set in. To reach that goal, what are all the targets every department has to function? 
we are working in the direction so that everybody has to perform in the government and produce results that is the issue we are taking now and there is also the e aushadi program that you have rendering medical services using digital technology uh, what has the impact of that been like and what's your vision for that in the future no we are going around 30 interventions we are able to introduce in uh, medical and health one is ntr by the seva more than 1300 diseases we are covering and also 2 lakh 50000 rupees we are giving for each person maximum ceiling and also all diagnoses in tr by the parisha even talli bidda express even mobile uh, hospital even e aushadini all these things we are able to establish very well how to bring awareness among people by using how to cure all diseases how to go preventive how to eradicate disease so with all these things i am sending medical college students to the villages bring awareness on medical front even i am working all over the world which is the best medical uh, program we have to take so if you were to envision andhra pradesh say in 2025 what's your vision like we are progressing very fast 2022 we will be one among top 3 states in the country either per capita income or gva or any parameter for that matter by 2029 we will be number 1 in the country with happiness as index 2050 we want to be the best destination in the world itself for this i am integrating all these things and also i am moving in the direction all departments i am asking my people be the best in the country first then benchmark the best in the world next phase in all parameters and with all these initiatives taken together what's the core agenda on the financial inclusion front now that there is a lot of talk going on of a cashless economy what's your vision for the state of andhra pradesh no andhra pradesh is having because of our initial mover we are having some advantage now i am going totally cashless transactions and also if you see on the pradesh as on today 25% it is average cashless transaction that is mobile currency i am very happy for that if you can bring 50% or 60% it is history so this is where financial inclusion and also mobile currency if you go all these things that we can control corruption you can control parallel economy or black money ultimately development will take place in a big way so that is that is the core agenda for us the newly coined maxim of minimum government and maximum governance has been truly put in perspective in andhra pradesh to deliver on the citizens promise the state is leveraging information technology to the hilt to provide government services to its citizens electronically thus bringing in transparency in all its citizen centric services please tell us what's your view of the it department how effectively are they leveraging technology especially for governance there are a lot of opportunities in the state as far as it is concerned if you look at our policies the way the government has taken up the policies whether it is it policy or whether it is the electronics policy are the in innovations and startup policy these are the three major policies with which andhra pradesh government has started building it in the state the ap fiber grid services have really earned uh, laurels across the world they are now being recognized so please talk to us a little bit about the infrastructure that's in place as you said fiber grid is one thing which re really revolutionized the state one two years back we never thought that we can go to the last mile and give 10 to 15 mbps to each and every household in the state now it has become a reality the entire uh, backbone of this fiber grid system has been completed we are coming up with the triple play boxes and uh, almost 10 lakh triple play boxes are in position now the villagers whether it is rural or urban everything they will get within this triple play box the imp the beauty of the box is this 
electricity also we are converting with this triple play bags. Each meter we are converting them into a smart meter. The government is on a mission to develop 100 smart cities over the next five years. Uh, your street light project is one step in that direction. So tell us a little more about that. All urban local bodies of the state, the entire street lights have been converted into uh, LED street lights. Around 5.5 lakh street lights of urban uh, municipalities have been uh, replaced with LED lights. Not only replacing them with LED street lights, we have, we, we have connected them to a central control room wherein you can monitor each and every street light whether it is functioning or not. And, may, and if it is functioning, whether it is giving the proper uh, lighting, proper lumens, proper voltage is there or not. Based on that, at any point of time, the monitoring authority can kind of inform the concerned, look, in a particular street, particular light is not working. Why don't you check up, do it, uh, replace it. Tell us a little bit about how e-governance is transforming the government itself. And is there a is there a large change in mindset? MISEVA is our flagship program. All services, almost our idea is in all 5,592 gram panchayats, around 355 services are being delivered uh, to the public online. This is what uh, MISEVA is. MISEVA, if you see this year itself, the number of transactions are around 81 millions. That itself we can understand the volume. So we have come up with e-office now. So at an average, each district almost around more than 1.5 like files have been in e-office. The e-office has changed the way one can administer the state. Right. In addition to that, the cabinet itself is a paperless cabinet now. It is a e-cabinet. E-office has really changed the way administration is functioning. And how have you adopted technology to make your public distribution system more fair and fast? And what has the impact of that been like? Today, all fair price shops in all villages, they are other enabled uh, EPAS system is being uh, is being utilized. Means the consumer, he gets the proper quality, proper quantity without any problem. And uh, the beauty is this EPAS is now all the public distribution system, the PDS dealers have been converted into banking correspondents. So the entire money now it has become cashless. Let's talk a little bit about how you've revolutionized the pension distribution scheme. Yeah. Your pension distribution scheme, the NTR Bharosa pension scheme, how does that really work? How has it eliminated middlemen and increased accountability of officials? The NTR pensions scheme, all, this, all the pensioners are linked with other database. So every month their pension is straight away going to their bank account. There is no middleman, there is no one. Straight away it goes to their bank account. Could you demystify the AP Purse app for us, please? How does that work? What is the framework like? See, AP Purse is a platform where we have aggregated all other payment wallets and uh, recently we have integrated this with uh, this unified payment gateways and NPCI. So AP Purse is one-stop solution for all transactions. Majority of the people have downloaded it, they are utilizing it and uh, if you see the reviews also, uh, AP Purse is hailed as one of the best uh, solution in this kind of demonetization period. One of the most revolutionary initiatives of the Andhra Pradesh government is ePragati. It is a mission-centric approach towards efficiently delivering services in an integrated and equitable manner to citizens as well as businesses. With ePragati, Andhra Pradesh aims to reach the top on the Global E-Governance Development Index. What's the kind of impact that E-Pragati is already creating as far as citizens are concerned? E-Pragati actually, in its, it's so very expansive that uh, it takes at least three years for it to be implemented and the effect to be seen in the true sense of the word mm. you know, of enterprise uh, architecture. See, it's a huge program with 72 projects, you know, contained in it and 14, made into 14 packages. So we are, there are at various stages of design, development and implementation. The one that has been tried out and reached the people is the Praja Sadhikara Survey or the Smart Pulse Survey, we used to call. Okay. To create what is called the People Hub. That means the entire socio-economic data of the people which will help the government to design the programs much more efficiently and implement them more effectively. 
and we are also currently uh, in the initial stage of implementing the land hub. Each parcel of land, whether it is urban or rural, will have its unique ID and then the entire history, knowledge and transactions around that piece of land would be available at one place for the citizens. Right. So, I mean, the land governance will be very transparent, convenient to the public uh, and, you know, much more efficient. Andhra Pradesh is aiming at bridging now to the future. How are you really aiming to do that? What are some of the changes that the state is witnessing under this particular drive? Yeah, we are trying to be ahead of the curve in terms of the taking up some innovative programs and uh, implementing them quickly. There is scope for infusing technology and benefiting in various sectors in the areas like agri even agriculture. You know, precision agriculture is an example in point. So these are all futuristic using, say, uh, telemedicine, popularizing telemedicine. Uh, futuristic definitely, but we are talking of those aspects now. And uh, it is quite doable in Andhra Pradesh definitely because of the fact that we have taken the fiber to almost 9,000 plus villages out of 12,000. Uh, high bandwidth uh, fiber we have taken there. Welcome back to Andhra Pradesh, India's Sunrise State Industry 4.0 inspired e-governance. We are talking about the strides that the state of Andhra Pradesh is taking in e-governance and now we are joined by J. H. Audrey, IT advisor to the government of Andhra Pradesh. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. So to start off, I'd like to hear from you uh, a generic view of the IT ecosystem in Andhra Pradesh. What is special about it? What is driving it? No, basically, our Andhra Pradesh uh, state uh, uh, led by uh, visionary Chief Minister uh, Sri Nara Chandra Babu Naidu Garu. Uh, right from the uh, beginning, uh, even during 90s, he was the first Chief Minister, first politician in the whole country talking about how technology can reduce the corruption, how technology could, be, uh, could become interface uh, between uh, citizen and uh, the government so that uh, the uh, corruption could be minimized. And he's the one who introduced the e-governance in the government way back in the 90s. And th that's how he became the father of the e-governance uh, for the nation. Now today, I mean, uh, he feels that uh, technology should be more useful to the common people who are living in the rural areas than people who are living in the urban areas. For example, for persons in the rural uh, uh, villages, uh, suppose if he has got a problem, he has to reach out to the concerned secretary. No way he can uh, I mean, meet him, no way he can uh, reach out to him. So that's where the e-governance right. is going to help him. He can just shoot out uh, his request and it will go to the concerned uh, secretary and that will be tracked by up to the chief minister uh, in his uh, dashboards. He will be uh, seeing I mean, how uh, people are I mean, uh, approaching the various uh, issues and uh, why the issues are uh, not able to be uh, addressed by the government and all that this thing. So that's the uh, main advantage uh, of uh, technology which is going to be useful for the uh, villages. That's where we see that uh, e-governance is going to be more useful to the common man than uh, people who, uh, who are living in the urban areas. In achieving the goal of minimum government, maximum governance, what are some of the key areas where technology can really play a distinctive role? E-governance is all about uh, minimum uh, uh, government and maximum uh, governance. So that's a very important fundamental thing for the e-governance applications. Before that, I mean, uh, people who used to get uh, afraid about the government bureaucracy, they were not able to get uh, uh, their approvals in time and all that this thing. Now through the e-governance, we are able to achieve that uh, once files an application. I mean, uh, that application, for example, in our uh, Andhra Pradesh state, we don't use any physical papers. All the officers, including Honorable Chief Minister, everybody uses e-office. All our files will come through the e-office me mechanism. If uh, it's getting delayed at my desk, it will be noticed by the others why it has taken so much time at, at uh, certain officers' uh, desk and all that. Automatically, it, it goes to the uh, next officer because it's been monitored uh, by the highest authority. How are you using technology to really make the business environment in Andhra Pradesh conducive for entrepreneurs? Technology is definitely playing an important role. 
and all our portals will have the complete information. So the entire infrastructure is uh, uh, going to be a digital infrastructure and uh, entrepreneurs from anywhere in the globe, they can reach out to the concern officers, they can reach out to the, all the policies uh, that we have and uh, they can apply uh, digitally from uh, any place uh, in the globe and uh, the, their applications can be tracked. And uh, there's a reason why more and more uh, uh, entrepreneurs are looking at uh, uh, coming to Andhra Pradesh because uh, ultimately business uh, goes by trust. Everything is very transparent, very transparent to the uh, industry. That's the reason why the trust is uh, a very high trust they are coming to Andhra Pradesh because everything what they see is uh, very clear to them, very transparent to them. Uh, because of that we are expecting uh, more investments to come to our new startup state of Andhra Pradesh. <laughs> Thanks to its prowess in using technology for governance, Andhra Pradesh is playing host to the National Conference on E-Governance this year. From sharing insights into building scalable and technology-driven governance models, to recognizing those who are contributing to efficient governance, the event will have lots to offer to policymakers, industry leaders, academicians and the citizens at large. When the Government of India decided to host this uh, uh, e-governance seminar in Vizag, uh, we thought that uh, the agenda for the conference uh, uh, has to be futuristic. Uh, uh, it should uh, talk about uh, things which are going to happen in the next 10, 15, 20 years. This time we wanted to uh, involve the IT industry also. So keeping all these things in mind, uh, we, uh, uh, we thought about Industry 4.0 because that is the one which will happen in uh, coming years. And the subjects that were chosen were uh, you know, cyber security, data analytics, uh, uh, fintech, uh, so uh, uh, robotics. So these subjects were chosen uh, so that, you know, it's sort of this e-governance seminar uh, tries to, uh, you know, lay a roadmap for the future. Well, that's all we have on this special episode. Do watch out for the National Conference on e-governance that's coming up at Vishakhapatnam on the 9th and 10th of January 2017. All the stakeholders from the government as well as industry are going to be present there and charting the roadmap ahead for achieving the goal of minimum government, maximum governance. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.